extremely, extremely dangerous. <laughs> no, it's not dangerous. It's very uh, difficult to make videos in this temperature here without a campfire. And we Hello there, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Savar Russia. So today I am out uh, scouting. It's a little bit cold. It's minus 26. But I'm out scouting for some, uh, some materials for a unique Siberian native survival uh, method. More I'm not gonna say about right now. But anyway, uh, we are scouting, so uh, I wanted to do a little video on uh, some winter survival camping tips and tricks for everybody, which everybody can use. It doesn't have to be minus 26, minus 30, minus 40 for uh, these tips to be uh, useful. Maybe some of you know about these tips, maybe some of you don't, maybe you just wanna go winter camping somewhere and are not really used to, uh, to winter camping or maybe you just find it interesting and it's of course gonna be a little bit tricky to uh, record in this cold so that's why we are gonna do the recording here basically <laughs> we had a link here close to the campsite you can see we have the largest links in the world in this area they can be up to 40 kilos so for the first little tip, it's about water of course, or well, not of course, but it is about water <laughs> and uh, some of you have seen this, some of you have not maybe, but when we've been struggling with melting snow into water or ice or whatever, uh, it's of course uh, very important to uh, save it to the next day and not have to, uh, <coughs> to, to repeat the process which is going to be even more problematic because now it's not snow then it's ice and it's going to take a while. So what are we going to do? We place our water container in the snow like this and we just cover it up. Excuse me the camera and all that good stuff. But we basically just cover it up with a thick layer of snow. We cover it like this. It doesn't matter the temperature, it's not going to freeze until the next day, that's for sure. But one important thing, if you're going to need your water during the night or later on and you remove it, there will of course be a cavity there. Don't put it back in, make a new place. How do I know? <laughs> because I tried it, because the cold air is going to run down the hole and you're going to basically just uh, stuff it up with the uh, air which is uh, cold and it's going to it's going to freeze. So that's how that is. And don't also don't don't stand it on the ground ground if the ground is frozen under the snow. Just stand it on the snow, cover it up. You'll be good to go because the colder it is, the more f the snow crystallizes and the better it insulates. So while one camera is heating up in the pocket, we can use another one and the audio is, uh, is less awesome on this camera but, and it's different. So bear over that. It's extremely dangerous. <laughs> no, it's not dangerous. It's very uh, difficult to make videos in this temperature here without a campfire. And we don't have a campfire because we are scouting. But in order to get water, we of course need something to melt water in. And in the winter here, in general, but especially in the winter, you cannot have too many containers for processing water and food in. I recommend to carry at least a mess kit of some kind. Stainless steel, Swedish M40. Hey, yes, Sve, yeah. <laughs> Swedish M40 is really great, but there's many others. And a stainless steel bottle, maybe yet another stainless steel bottle. And the last container uh, can be like a plastic bottle of something of some kind you know even uh, even the, the the bags from the from the soya filters the big ones <coughs> they're really great because they don't take up much space why do i say this because uh, um, Many don't realize how problematic it actually is, how much time it takes. It takes uh, time from all other sort of stuff we do if we're out surviving in the cold, processing uh, snow and ice into water. It's, it's, uh, and, and then you have to store it in something because we have to cook as well, right? Hopefully, anyway, if we're smart enough to have uh, some food with us. There's no such thing as a winter survival kit. 
The winter survival kit is your kit. <laughs> it's the, what you have in the backpack or in the sled behind us. And by the way, guys, I have a new way of uh, supporting the channel for you guys who are interested in going the extra mile, doing what 99% uh, of my viewers and subscribers are not doing, is supporting the channel. It's the uh, site, links in the description and pinned comment, of course. Site called Boosty. Uh, they're kind of Russian friendly and uh, it's international, secure way of supporting the channel, so uh, go and check out the link please, that will be awesome, I will highly appreciate it. Back to camera one, and I just realized something, there we have the links, or oh, Bobcat, I think links are the bigger one, you can see, they actually marked this territory here, it thinks this owns my campsite, I can see, but in order to melt water and all that good stuff, we of course have to uh, make a fire, right? And there are not many better ways to bring a saw. It doesn't have to be a silky saw, which I prefer, of course, and I have many of them. But this is uh, my silky Ultra XL 240. It means that this uh, blade is 10 inches, it's 240 millimeters. And as I recently on the, the ice fishing there shown again, 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 is that the saw is the most effective, fastest, safest way to process firewood fast for a fast fire. No axe, no knife, I rest my case. I'm not saying you shouldn't bring an axe, but a saw, even uh, any saw which, which you like to use <laughs> and can uh, cut through logs. I mean, the, the bow saws, they are a little bit restricted because of the bow, but they'll of course work. But anyway, a saw, super fast to cut firewood. And of course, then you have to learn to make the Siberian log fire, which is uh, your best uh, go-to fire for low maintenance fire, not much work and a lot of heat. <laughs> it's of course a Siberian native concept. Okay, so I just took care of business and marked this territory as mine. <laughs> I hope it understands this message. Anyway, in order to make a fire, we need our hands. If you're not familiar with the cold climate and so on, and you go there in the summertime and want to camp, bring lots of gloves, gloves and mittens, and Bring a pair of winter work gloves, something like this. I mean, doesn't have to be any specific brand or anything like this, as long as they're good. Because they're not really warm. Yeah, they're warm enough, but if you sweat in them, they get pretty darn cold. But they will save your own gloves from being uh, wet, uh, from uh, melting snow when you have to uh, maneuver and uh, manipulate uh, logs and cut them up and so on, you will eventually of course, get the wet gloves and so on. But let's just drum. Let's, let's just drum right next to it. Drum right next to it. Fire. In order to make a fire, we need some fire. We need something to make a fire with, right? My preferred go-to is sometimes lighter, sometimes matches. But my preferred for winter is, of course, a ferro rod because it works as always. These guys that said, yeah, the lighter is by far the best and all that good stuff. But with cold hands, it's not already always the case. I brought a lighter with me. It's been laying down there for like two, three minutes. How well does it work? How, oh, it's a little bit. And I can see the valve actually got stuck. Well, we can warm it up in the hands and it will start to work, but already in the cold, it's not really nice to my fingers. It's not really nice to manipulate this little uh, tumbler there, which makes sparks. So uh, a lighter is not, uh, um, in my opinion, uh, super awesome. I mean, of course, good. See, it, it kind of almost works now. <laughs> almost. So lighters, yeah, they're good if you can warm them up and if you don't have cold hands. But a ferro rod, which we should always have together with our knife. <laughs> Knives, I have three knives with me today, uh, is by far preferable. And let's take a look at the knife here. I have so many questions about this setup here. I mean, this is a setup that uh, I know for a fact, I'm well, Danish, right? So I know that a Danish uh, professional fishermen and uh, Norwegians and so on, maybe not all of them, but anyway, I've seen fishermen wearing the knives like this. 
outside of the ring gear uh, because it's an easy access <laughs> as you can see and it's a fast access if they are uh, getting caught up in a, in a line or something like this on a troll or whatever not a troll, the steel wire normally but anyway not to get dragged overboard and with this and this and that but it's a very fast way to, uh, to, to get access to your knife right? <coughs> very useful because uh, it's not always that useful to uh, jump in under the jacket here and get our knives out so what is with this setup here and why I, I mean you can see I use this because you can use any guy any knife which has attachments for uh, one inch uh, webbing straps right but more I already made this multi mount here which you can see we can put the webbing straps through here, here, and here, and down here. There's holes for screws and this and that. But more, they are morons. <laughs> They're not selling this multi-mount uh, by itself. Uh, you have to buy it together with the knife. And this is the Moro Kamsball. And the Moro Kamsball knife here is ideal for this setup here because it's light and it's an amazingly good knife. It's very thin. So I think it's like two and a half millimeters thick or something like this. It's very light. I think 135 grams, which makes it ideal for this setup here. I don't like uh, neck dangler knives because uh, I mean, if we fall over and we land on the knife like this here, right, then uh, we have a big problem. <laughs> so uh, that's what with the setup here. But you can use anything. I mean, I just uh, made this myself. I mean, I just. Stitch this buckle in, and uh, I can unbuckle it here if I want to, right? Like that, and I can have my uh, ferro rod together with my knife. So that's the simple setup for this little knife here. Another little tip: if you are outside in the in the snow and you're having cold feet, right? I'm not having cold feet in these, <laughs> but anyway, you can get out in the snow, cover your boots up with snow. I stand there and uh, you will actually feel a remarkable difference. I already feel the difference because I of course can feel a little bit cold through the boots because I'm standing still, right? But uh, it actually works. It actually works. The downside is, is that you cannot move <laughs> while using this little tip here. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's horrible to make this video because we don't have any campfire or anything. So my final little tip is Speaking about cold hands, right? Don't do this. Don't blow air, moist air from your breath, from your mouth to your hands if you want to warm your hands. It is literally like peeing your pants to stay warm. Rather get your hands under your armpits and heat them up like that. Stick them through the jacket or whatever and heat them up. This is a much, much better way to do it. Promise you. <laughs> so guys, that's it for this little video here. Some, uh, just some tips for survival, winter camping, whatnot. And uh, yeah, upcoming video on a very, very interesting uh, Siberian native uh, survival method. So guys, please check the links in the description. Please consider supporting the channel. I have a new link for channel support and a channel project there, and it's just for support in general, of course. It's called Boosty. Thank you very much to you guys who are already signed up there. Super awesome, but it's an international, secure way of supporting the channel. And uh, go check it out. I'll appreciate it, as always. So, guys, until next time, get on train, get done, do something awesome, and see you in the next one. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>